Well, I don't think we need another sermon this morning, do we? I think that that song just preaches the truth and the love of God. And I don't know, I mean, just the way they even sang it, too, just the soft voices, just singing how good God is. And man. I would say kids are dismissed, but they already walked out. <laughs> oh, I guess the teachers are still in here. Okay. I don't know. I mean, what do you do after that? I mean, that song just had all the points listed. <laughs> I mean, just, I don't know, just even hear children like that sing a song like that. Just the innocence and them singing it. I mean, just the power of the words. We just, we have an awesome God that loves us, cares for us, answers prayer. You know, sometimes he doesn't answer the prayers the way we think he should answer them, but he always answers our prayers according to his will, and his will is always right. And the fact that he is coming back, I mean, that's, that's just a wonderful truth that uh, we can always hope in. We know that he is coming back. We know that we will see him face to face. But may we continue to be able to sing with a heart like that. Even when we're faced with opposition, even when we're faced with uncertainties in the world, that we can still say, my God is good to me. Because he is good all the time. And all the time he is good. Take your Bibles, go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. Continuing on, talking about some future events on God's timetable. We looked over some already. Obviously, we started at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We looked at the one world government that's coming. We looked at the rapture of God's people before the Antichrist would be revealed. And this morning, we're going to look at that in Revelation. And look at the one world leader that will arise in the last days. And as we look at it, obviously it's scripture. It's a wonderful thing that God does. Sometimes, we, sometimes you may think, you may, if, I, if I knew the future, I could plan a lot better for it. And if, I, if I knew my car was going to break down this week, I could, I could plan for it. You know, if, I, if I knew some ex- unexpected hospital bill was going to arise, I could plan for it. I, you know, just sometimes we think, you know, if I knew the future, but honestly, if, if God allowed us to know everything that would happen in our life, we probably would not continue to follow him. We would try our own ways and think, well, okay, well, let, let me do this and see if it works out better uh, than what God is showing me. But I love the fact that God does show us some of what's going to happen in the future. We don't have all the details, but what God has revealed to us, he's revealed to us so that we can prepare ourselves, but also be encouraged that in some of these future events, we're not here. And the one event that we're looking at this morning in regards to the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 13, who will be the one world leader at the time. Again, God's people, the, the church will be raptured out, the church, uh, the, the age, the church age will be done with. Uh, will be raptured out, but there will be obviously God's people, there will be those that will get saved during the tribulation, during those seven years. There will be people to get saved. God's going to be working in Israel, uh, renewing the hearts of his people. He raises up evangelists, Jewish evangelists to preach the gospel, all these things during the seven-year tribulation, during the last, say, in the last three and a half years of the tribulation that the book of Revelation talks about. But I want us, again, the whole point of these messages recently is just so we understand 
uh, some things that are going on in the world, and we understand where things are heading, and that uh, not only can we pray uh, for things, and, and, but also, also have some wisdom on why are things happening that are happening, uh, you know, even just again in, in, in what we see in our own country, just, uh, just the turmoil, just the uprisings, just things that just aren't right, that they're allowing to happen, forcing things on people, all these things, because again, in order for the Antichrist uh, to be accepted, in order for nations, all nations, to give up their sovereignty as a nation, to give their power to one leader, well, people have to be conditioned to be able to do that. People have to be, they have to get people to a point uh, where, again, they want someone to come and make it right. They want someone to have the answers. And obviously that one is Jesus Christ. He has all the answers. He's the only one that can bring true peace. But there's an antichrist who will appear. Uh, he will appear to have all the right answers. He will appear to have peace for the world, peace for Israel, because Again, no matter how many treaties and, and things that have been tried for is, between Israel and Israel's enemies, they always fail. They're, they continue to be bombed and attacked, and Israel continues to defend itself against its enemies. But this Antichrist will come with seemingly the right answer. He'll be the only one to be able to come up with a set with this with this peace treaty with Israel that everybody will be okay with, Israel will be okay with, but obviously it's broken at the three and a half year mark. God reveals that in his word to us. But for us, we just have to understand, you know, again, in order for all nations, all countries to fall in line with, with what the devil wants to do, with what the Antichrist is going to do, all nations, including America, who is a currently still a free country. We still have freedoms, but in order to get us, this country, in line with the one world government, the one world leader, uh, drastic things have to take place. Freedoms have to be taken away. People have to be conditioned in a way that they, they want someone to bring peace. They want someone to make things right. And again, God lays it out perfectly in, in his word for us. And again, just a reminder that if you're born again, if you're saved, trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not be here when the Antichrist is revealed. Scripture tells us that, and we'll look at 2 Thessalonians in a second. But just a reminder, you won't be here, but again, these are things that we do need to be aware of, so it helps us to warn other people and helps us to be wise on what's going on in the world and helps us, hopefully helps us, to draw closer to the Lord and to prepare in meeting our Savior face to face when the trumpet sounds and we are caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord and to be with him forever. So Revelation chapter 13, look at verse number 1. And I stood, again, this is John. He's on the Isle of Patmos. He's been exiled for his faith. They tried boiling him in oil. He survived it. They still wanted to get rid of him, so they stuck him on this island. But guess what? No matter where you're at, you can never be taken away from God. You can never be taken away from God. doesn't matter if, if John is put on a, an island all by himself. You go back to chapter 1, John is worshiping the Lord on the Lord's day, and the Lord appears to him. The Lord comes to him, and he, he's revealed several things. I mean, just things are revealed to John, and, and we see the words of Christ, obviously the letters that, that he wants John to write to the seven churches, and then things that are going to happen uh, that he reveals. Some things, again, uh, we don't know every detail, but God does give us a glimpse. He gives us some wisdom to know. Uh, when things are happening and what to look for and, and again, what to pray for, what to pray against. But again, he says, And I, John, stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, 
and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped. Remember, Stephen stopping there. The devil always mimics the truth. Remember back in, in boy, I think I even got it written down, back in the Old Testament where, where the devil says to himself, I will, I will five times, I will be like the most high. Everything he does is a mimic of what Jesus Christ has done because in verse number three, seemingly this Antichrist will die, but then he'll revive. He'll be resurrected. Obviously, Jesus Christ died and he was resurrected. There's different things that the Antichrist will do and, and even uh, you know, as we get to it in the later verses, he will even... He will even call fire down from heaven in the sight of men. Now, where else was fire called down from heaven in the sight of men? Well, that was with Elijah, right, on Mount Carmel. So again, the devil wanting to show, the Antichrist wanting to show signs and wonders to prove that he's some great God. And again, he'll eventually sit in the temple that's rebuilt in Jerusalem, that's rebuilt. He'll sit in the temple claiming to be God, and demanding worship as God, because again, that's what the devil has wanted from the beginning, was to steal God's glory and God's praise, and to have men worship him. But obviously, since he cannot dethrone God, the best he can do is set up a throne here on earth. But again, as you read scripture, uh, it may seem like the devil's going to have the upper hand, but uh, the Lord Jesus Christ comes and destroys him. Again, Look at verse number three. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was helped, uh, healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not. Please pay close attention to verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. How is it that in the last days so many people, all the nations, so many people would, would worship this beast, would worship the Antichrist because their names are not written in the Lamb's book of life? Not a single child of God will take the mark of the beast or worship the beast. And God's very clear to have that in the word of God, in your Bible. So we understand those that are worshiping the beast, worshiping the Antichrist, are those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. They rejected Jesus Christ. Again, the whole world is looking for, for somebody to bring peace. They're looking for someone to come and bring peace upon the earth. Jesus Christ will do that, but before he does, the Antichrist comes and he brings his false peace because in that three and a half year mark in the middle of the tribulation, he breaks that peace treaty with Israel and, and uh, just havoc, just, it, just, it just breaks loose. I mean, he just starts, he starts killing the Jews. He starts killing those that will not take the mark, those that have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ during that time, he starts persecuting God's people. And again, as the verse even says, God allows it. God allows it for a time. In verse number 8 again, All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. 
He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you again for your love, your mercy, and grace. Thank you for the songs of children, the song of children sang, Lord, what, what a moving song, what a, really what a, what a song that touches the heart. And Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that we know that you love us, that you hear our prayers. We thank you that you're coming back one day. We thank you, Father, all things will be made right. Father, we thank you for the new heaven, the new earth that's been prepared. Father, thank you for just the, the mansion that you have prepared for us uh, in heaven, in, in your Father's house. And we thank you, Father, for just all that you do. But Lord, I pray that you would help us to be mindful of the things you have revealed to us in the scriptures. I pray, Father, you'd help us to uh, really think about it, to not fear it, but Lord, to think about it, uh, to be thankful that uh, we won't be here during the during the tribulation, but Lord, to be mindful of the fact that we want uh, to try to tell as many people as we can between now and then, between now and the rapture, uh, Lord, about the Lord Jesus Christ so that others will not have to uh, go through that great tribulation. But Father, again, there will be those that go through it. Uh, but Lord, help us to be, to help us, Lord, to have just sober minds, Lord, to really think about it. And I pray that you'd guide us and direct us uh, Lord, time is always short. Time is never seemingly on my side. But Father, I know that what you have to say to our hearts is what matters. So, Lord, please speak to our hearts through your word. I pray that you would just comfort us, guide us, encourage us. Uh, Lord, just whatever your will is this morning, we pray it be done. As always, Lord, speak to the hearts of children in junior church, just like you did in Sunday school. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Back in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, in verses 7 through 9, the Bible says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Speaking of the Holy Spirit. All right, when the Holy Spirit is removed, then that Antichrist goes on to say, And then shall that wicked be revealed. The wicked, speaking of the Antichrist, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Again, back in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, God's people are admonished, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Again, the Antichrist is against Christ, it's against the things of God. Again, since the beginning, there has been a spirit of Antichrist. There's been a spirit from the devil that has gone out, that has been deceiving people uh, all throughout history. Again, if, uh, not to get into it, but you go back to, to the Holocaust. You go back to uh, when the Nazis were, uh, were just destroying lives, killing lives, causing destruction and stuff. In the last days, that will seem like child's play, and I don't mean to say child's play in a very you know, disrespectful way. Many lives were lost. Many people put their lives on the line to hide Jews and to help the Jews. Obviously, our military men lost lives in trying to do the same and trying to save lives and trying to uh, combat the Nazis and all of that. What I'm saying is, though, in the days when the Antichrist will reign, as the Bible tells us, many lives will be lost, more than can be numbered. But the Bible tells us, though, that even now there are many Antichrists. There are many that are against the Lord Jesus Christ, that fight against right. There are many that call good evil and evil good. Uh, there are nations, there are leaders uh, that are... They have sold their soul to the devil already. They are an agent of the devil. The Bible tells us that not uh, that the that de the devil can appear as an angel of light, and his ministers as well. His demons can appear as ministers of light. The devil is already working in our world. The spirit of Antichrist is already working. The things are working towards this moment in history. The Bible talks about when the Antichrist will rise, when the beast, when, when the devil will give him all of his power, his seat, his great authority, all the worlds, all the, uh, all the leaders of the worlds will look to him and willingly give him all of their power, all of their authority. 
because they worship the devil. They do not worship the Lord Jesus Christ. We do not live in a world that is hospitable to Christians. We live in a world that is obviously against the things of God. And I want us to understand that when you read through your Bible, there are many names that reference the Antichrist, that reference the devil in these last days. And Daniel chapter 7, he's mentioned as the beast or the little horn. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he's mentioned as the man of sin or the son of perdition. In 1 John, he mentions as the Antichrist. In Matthew, the abomination of desolation. Again, the devil from the beginning has been trying to destroy lives. He rose up against his creator. He, rose, he was created as an angelic being. He rose up. There was fault found in him. He rose up. He allowed, he was, he allowed pride to fill himself, and he said that he wanted to be like the Most High, and he was cast down. He came into the Garden of Eden. He tempted Adam and Eve. They tempted them with disobedience, but did not really say, you know, follow me in disobedience. It was simply, yea, hath God said. The devil from day one has always wanted to cause God's people to discredit the word of God. The devil always wants you to question the word of God. Is it, you know, what's taught, being talked here? Is it just symbolic? Is it something that really going, is something that's really going to happen? Is it something I need to pay attention to? Uh, sometimes the devil may even try to whisper in your ear, stop taking the Bible too literal. Stop, being, t- stop taking the Bible so seriously. But listen, God's given us his word to guide us in this life and to prepare us and to let us know of things that are going to happen so that we can, even though we will not be here, again, like I said, if you are a born-again believer, you've put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the Bible plainly tells us and shows us that there's coming a moment that we will be caught away, that we call the rapture. There's coming a moment when the archangel will shout, the trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will rise first, those which were alive and, and remain will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord and so ever be with the Lord. But until that day, things are going to happen. Things are going, again, we're, we're living in a time right now like never before. In our country, we're living in a time like we've never seen before. And all of it is pointing to the end. All of it is in preparation for the end. Everything that happens is in preparation for what is going to happen. It is to get people to be desensitized, to get people to reject the gospel, to reject Jesus Christ. It is to get people to be conformed and to just following what they're told to do instead of trusting in Jesus Christ and following the Lord. But there is coming one that will reign, the Bible says, for a time. He will reign. He will come as as a peacekeeper, but there's only one prince of peace, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. But this morning, I do want us to understand the description of this Antichrist, the description of this beast regarding to verse number 1. Look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. John stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now, this Antichrist will come. Uh, He will have power politically. He will have power diplomatically. He will be someone that rises through the ranks. And I believe right now, as many others, that the Antichrist is alive right now. He just has not been revealed. He has not been revealed as the one world leader. But he's rising through the ranks. He He is making his place known. Obviously, he is getting to that position he, politically. People are looking to him, and they will look to him as one that can help the entire world because there's not a single person right now that has all the answers to the, every problem in the world. Right now, every nation wants to be sovereign. Every nation wants to be the powerhouse. Uh, China, uh, bolstering its muscles right now, wanting to show itself dominant. All countries want to show themselves dominant, and the way they do it is to take over other countries. But this man, this this son of perdition, uh, this abomination of desolation, this beast, this little horn, this man of sin will rise up, and all will willingly give their authority over to him. And I love the fact that none of this escapes God. God knows every bit of it. 
And it all plays into God's final judgment of the devil and all those that have put their faith and trust in him instead of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the fact I've told you before, like I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a great book reader. If I read a book, I always look at the back to see how it ends before I start the book. Is it something I even want to read? And basically, if I've already read the back of it, if I've read the end of it, then why do I need to read the rest of it, right? But with the Bible, I do love reading the Bible, all right? I've read the back of the book several times, and I still read the other pages, too, because I love the fact I can always say, devil, you're a loser. Just read the pages. And he knows that. Listen, he knows his time is limit. Limited. He knows that his home is the lake of fire, that one day he will be cast into the lake of fire for eternity, but he still wants to take as many people with him as he can. He still will deceive the nations. People will still reject Jesus Christ and give their allegiance to him. It baffles me, but again, God, God lays it out because, listen... Man's heart is wicked, desperately. Who, who can know it? Even back in Genesis, the reason why God destroyed, destroyed people during that time because their hearts were so wicked, the imaginations of their heart was just wicked continually. They had given themselves over to demonic things. But again, as a child of God, you and I have been spared from it. But again, we need to be aware of it so we can warn others and we can even put the pieces of the puzzles together as things are being revealed in our lifetime of where this is heading. And we'll get, we'll get to, I don't want to get too much off subject because you know what, I may not even get past point one because of the time, but we all understand, you read back in Genesis, right after the flood, right after the flood, the people are gathering themselves together Nimrod being, as the Bible talks about, a great hunter, a great leader, uh, they start erecting this tower that we call, that's called Babel. It was to reach under the heavens. It was to bring all the people together under one religion, under one ruler. And God came down and, do, and God, God discomfited them. God confused them with multiple languages. So from the beginning, even in, with the Tower of Babel, you just... Go back to Genesis and you see just where people are trying to get this one world system, this one religion system going. And it will happen in the end. But even now, uh, I didn't know this until someone showed it to me. Uh, I know that in the last days, you know, Babylon will be revived. Uh, Babylon will be uh, a place that is revived just like it was. But in fact, even now... Even now, there is a building that was constructed after, Bab after the Tower of Babel. And uh, the fact that it, they, they constructed it in such a way that it looks like an unfinished tower. And, in the, and in, the, in the front of this building, that they even say that, that they meant to construct it that way, that in, out front, when you walk up to the building, they have a statue there. We really call it a statue, but what would you call it? Because it's, um, I call it a statue, but it's, it's not like the Statue of Liberty. It's, it's made out of other materials. But when you, when you see this picture, it is what Revelation talks about, the woman riding the beast. And this is, this is a building that's already been constructed. This is what they have. So I mean, you know, America doesn't see a lot of what goes around on the other side of the globe. There are people that are anti-Christ. There are people and authority that hate you and would rather see you dead because you're a Christian, you're a child of God. And again, we have victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to understand this is, these are not things that are just going to, you know, that are just in, written in a fairy tale book. These are things that God reveals to us. It's things that people around the world can see even happening now and, 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 and just ushering in that day when the Antichrist will be revealed. But like 2 Thessalonians tells us, he will not be revealed as the peacekeeper, as the one that brings peace, 
until the Holy Spirit is removed. And when the Holy Spirit is removed from, the, from this earth, the church, the born-again believers, will be raptured out as well. But again, this Antichrist, this beast, as he's called, he has political power, he has diplomatical power. In Revelation chapter 17 and verse 10, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 24, the, Daniel prophesied of these ten horns and said the ten horns out of his kingdom, I'm sorry, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Again, it just talks about the Antichrist. He will rise politically, and he will take over different positions, and kings will give him their authority and their power. Because back in Daniel chapter 7, verse 8, Daniel says, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, which obviously is a reference to this Antichrist, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. He has and will have political power, but diplomatically he will have power as well. Revelation chapter 6 verse 2 says, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, but no arrows, just a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. I mean, when you think about a white horse, and you think about a crown, you think, man, that sounds like the Lord Jesus Christ, because he comes back riding on a white horse. Again, the Antichrist is just that. He's Antichrist. He is an imposter. Again, it's, the world's going to get so bad that everyone wants someone to come and bring peace, and he arises with obviously his substitute peace, his peace that's really not peace because he's going to destroy lives with his peace. But the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ, gives lives. He restores lives with his peace. But this is the Antichrist. And John says, I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer this Antichrist is going to conquer the world without one single battle. Just peace. I mean, people just will give him the authority, give him his, his authority. And, and again, when he gets in the last days, they, they believe that the world at the time of the Antichrist will be divided into ten regions. Right now we have, we have many, many separate countries. But it is believed that in the last days that our world will not be like it is right now, though it will be, it'll be uh, separated, it will be divided into ten different regions, and there will be kings or, or rulers over these different regions that end up just giving the Antichrist his power. Give, it's given him the authority over the entire world. All right? Now, I want you to think about Daniel chapter 8. For time's sake, I'm not having you turn to these, but you can write them down. But you just think about his place of power. He's going to have political power. Diplomatically, he'll have power. But also, in Daniel chapter 8, it's been said, and through, it was prophesied, and through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. You go to Revelation, and Revelation speaks, when the Lord comes down, he, he basically consumes the devil and the armies with just the sword from his mouth, his word. So without hand... But again, I, I almost suspect, and many suspect the same, that this, this person that's going to rise up through the ranks not, may not necessarily right now be demon-possessed, but he will become demon-possessed because he will sell himself to the devil to get to the place to be the world leader. I believe he will because, again, the Bible talks about that the devil will give him his power, give him his seat, 
So it's someone who is going to sell their soul to the devil for the power. Because yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, so many, there's so many men in this world that want the power. They want to be, you know, the top dog. They want to be, you know, the leader, the one in everybody. But there's just one that will slowly rise through the ranks. And eventually, I believe, he will become demon-possessed, and he will, in his own heart, start thinking he's God. And he will defile the temple of God by sitting in the temple, claiming that he is God. And again, he's going to deceive the nations. He's going to deceive the world, and he's going to produce some miracles that will cause people to think and say, who can make war with the beast? Who is like unto him? But I praise the Lord, there is coming one that doesn't need to make war, but there's one coming that will destroy the beast and destroy the Antichrist because he is the true prince of peace, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Very quickly, I want you to think about, take your Bibles, go to Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. You go to Revelation 17, I'm going to read verse 2 of Revelation 13. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. His feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave, his, gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Again, he's going to have great authority. It's going to be a... a uh, it's going to be... I can't even say the word. My tongue is tied right now. But it's going to be... It's going to consist of all the past the past kingdoms that have ruled in this world because he mentions in verse 2, he mentions a leopard, he mentions a bear, he mentions a lion. But if you were to go back, and not for time's sake, don't, but if you were to go back to Daniel chapter 7 and look at verses 3 through 7, Daniel reveals uh, the image that or the the vision he was given of a lion, a bear, a leopard, and then a a fourth beast that was nondescriptive but it is the revised Roman Empire. The lion represents Babylon. The bear represents Medo-Persia. The leopard represents Greece. And the nondescriptive beast in Daniel 7 represents the revised Roman Empire. So you think about this Antichrist that will reveal, uh, be revealed and arise in the last days when he is allowed to. He's going to have the accumulate, uh, He's going to have all of this power behind him. He's going to have He's going to be worse than all of they were, than all those kingdoms were by themselves. He's going to have the, the strength and the power of all of them together. His, his power is going to be derived from his affiliations with these countries. In Revelation 17, look at verse 12 and 13. And I apologize if I'm speaking fast. I just want to get, get through this. I want you to, to see some things and understand some things for time's sake. I uh, don't want to keep you too long, but in Revelation 17, look at verse 12 and 13. The ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. I mean, God's revealing to John. Jesus is revealing to John. Okay, the ten horns you saw on the beast, they are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength Unto the beast. I've already been saying that where, where these ten kings, where it's been said that our world is going to be divided into ten regions, there'll be ten leaders, they're just going to give, give their authority, give their power, their strength uh, to the beast. Again, look at verse, uh, go back to chapter 13, look at verse 3, because his power, his prominence and the power in the world is going to be derived from his affiliation with these other kingdoms that will give him. Uh, their power, give them the, their authority, their strength, but also his power, his recognition is going to be derived from his death and resurrection. Again, the Antichrist is just that. He is not Jesus Christ. He's not the Prince of Peace. But again, the world at that time will be looking for somebody to bring peace, to, to set everything straight, because How do you think the world is going to react when millions of people disappear in a blink of an eye? There's going to be chaos. But then again, maybe there won't be chaos. Maybe again, there won't be chaos. Because people are being desensitized right now. People are being uh, 
brainwashed into believing that certain people are the problem and certain people need to be removed. I won't get into too much of it right now, but again, there, there are states right now that are constructing concentration camps. They call them quarantine camps to put people in. People that they consider the bad people. And there are people that are, are being brainwashed and thinking that certain people uh, are the problem. If we get rid of them, everything will be fine. So, you know, in the end, we don't really know. I mean, again, you've got, you've got the Left Behind series that, that, you know, the movies, the books that kind of show the chaos, you know, that may be when pilots disappear and the co-pilot doesn't know what to do and there's no pilot in the plane and, and there's all kinds of things, you know, cars crashing. You know, I don't know. I don't think it's really going to be like that. I could be wrong. I think, I think people will be so conditioned that, that, you know what, when the Christians are gone, everybody's happy. But then there, there's so much problem in the world that, you know what, someone's got to fix it. Someone's got to do something. So the Antichrist rises up. Again, we, we don't, God doesn't reveal everything that's going to happen in Scripture. But what he has revealed, we do need to... Take, a, take account of it. We need to acknowledge it. We need to let God use it in preparing us. Because again, there's not going to be peace on this earth until Jesus Christ comes. What is it going to be like at the very end before you are raptured out? What's it going to be like at the end, before the Antichrist is revealed. There's going to be more hatred in this world. There's going to be more disgust towards Christians and the things of God. We have no idea how bad things will get before we're taken home, before the trumpet sounds. That's why it's important, like in, in Sunday school, we just, we just started looking at Stephen, who was a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, a man full of the Holy Spirit. It's important that we as God's people continue to grow in our faith, our faith continues to strengthen, and that we continue to seek the filling of the Holy Spirit in our life so that we can endure the last days. Again, I'm, I, don't, I have no idea what the last days are going to be like, but I know one thing, that we do live in an antichrist world, even though this world was made by God, yet the people that are in this world, not all of them, but those that are on the side of the devil are going to do everything they can to make life miserable for Christians, for constitutionalists, those that still believe in the Constitution, uh, just those that are even conservative, not necessarily Christian. But again, these are, these are times where those that obviously, I'll say, are constitutionalists and are conservatives, not necessarily Christians, they're living in a time where, you know what, they do need to be saved. They need to see that, you know what, not just, you can't just believe in the Constitution and believe in conservatism and be okay. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that will make you okay. But again, as we see in our own Bibles, as God reveals this to us, this Antichrist that he will arise to certain power and how how it will how it will come to pass, how it will even be when we're raptured out, we don't know, but we can. That's why we can look for the blessed hope. That's why we can look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord. It's why we have any hope whatsoever, because we know that we're on the winning side. We know that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. And that's why I have hope. That's why I have encouragement. That's why I know without a shadow of doubt I won't be here during this time. But again, Lord, help me to be faithful until you take me home. Help me, Lord, to be faithful and to trust you and to allow you to work in my life so that I'm not ashamed at your coming. Again, as we, as we already read, and again, we'll probably have to... I'm going to end and we'll start this, we'll, we'll finish this up next week, but go back to chapter 13 because I, I want us to understand 
I just want us to be able to walk away knowing that there's nothing to fear. We need, again, we need to be wise. We need to understand the times that we're in. And the Bible says redeeming the time because we know the days are evil. But in chapter 13 of Revelation, you look at verse number 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. The Lord's given us ears to hear. There's a voice behind you, a soft, still voice that says, this is the way walk ye in it. You have the Spirit of God in your life. And God wants His Spirit to guide us and to lead us. He wants us to be aware of what's coming, so it motivates us now to give our lives completely to Him. Again, I even though, again, there's... In my, in my early years, I wondered how in the world could anybody, after a thousand-year reign, and, and we'll get to it at some point, but when Jesus reigns for a thousand years on this earth, and the devil's loosed again, because there's, this, there's, there's different stages to the final destruction of Satan. There's different stages until we get to the final end where there's a new heaven, a new earth, no more sin, no more sickness, no more death. But how is is the Bible talks about a thousand years of the true Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, reigning on this earth, that after a thousand years the devil could be loose from the bottomless pit and still deceive people to follow him against Christ again because their names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Their heart has not been drawn to Christ. They totally have rejected, and they just kind of went, went along with the 1,000 years. They just kind of went along with it, waiting. And, there, and again, even we live in, our, in the day that we live in where, where people would rather have seemingly destruction instead of peace in their life. But as you just think about the Scriptures, is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're saved and on your way to heaven? Because God's not given us a spirit of fear. Now, the devil will try to tempt us with fear. The devil will try to tempt us with doubt. But again, what God's revealed in his word is for our good, for us to prepare, for us obviously as a motivation that, you know what, I don't want anyone to have to go through. And again, we won't even get, we won't even, in the messages I'm, that I'm preaching, we won't, we won't even get to uh, the other verses that talk about when God pours out his wrath upon earth. All right? But you just think about the fact that you're on the winning side. And because you're on the winning side, the Lord's given you of his spirit to guide you, to direct you, to give you wisdom. Let Jesus Christ be the one that you follow. Let Jesus Christ be the one that you always listen to. The one that you always look to. So many people are deceived because they're following a man. They're following some world system that seemingly gives them what they want. They're being conditioned into continually following a man instead of following the Lord Jesus Christ. I just say, as a, as a child of God, if you would go ahead and stand, and we'll close, but as a child of God, the one we follow is the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't allow yourself to do everything man says, even in the name of science. Let the Lord Jesus Christ guide you. If you're a child of God, then he's given you ears to hear. He's given you spiritual ears to hear. Father, we do thank you that you have given us wisdom through the scriptures. But Father, again, I, I don't ever want to kind of rush through things. But Lord, at the same time, I don't want to, to hammer on one thing so much. But Father, we do need the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. 
Father, we need to be guided in our last days by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we need to purpose in our hearts to follow the Lord Jesus Christ and to seek your guidance and your wisdom. But man's way will always lead to destruction. But following the Lord Jesus Christ will always lead to life and peace and comfort. That's why Jesus said, All that labor and are heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. And he gives rest unto the soul. Father, I thank you that you've given us wisdom. Lord, you've given us basically an outline of what's going to happen in the last days. But Lord, I thank you that, again, we can can read the end of the book. And Father, we know that the enemy loses, Jesus Christ wins, and we win because he's already given us victory. Father, I ask that you would please speak to our hearts, Lord, according to your will. As the piano begins to play, give you a few moments alone in prayer.